welcome to Local Lens. I'm Susan Heisinga, Executive Director of Wallingford Public Access, better known as WPAA-TV and Community Media Center. And we're here to talk about another building, 41 South Main Street. And I would like to ask the question, what makes property notable? Is it the first owner or the architecture or the location? Or is it the story? 41 South Main Street is notable for all of these things. And it has a legacy of controversy about its preservation. So tonight, I'm really happy to be able to catch up on the story about 41 South Main Street with the current owner, Aaron Benham. Welcome, Aaron. Thank you for having me, Susan. I'm going to start with a cluster question. Three-pronged, you can tackle it any way you'd like. Was 41 South Main Street your first restoration project? Did you have an interest in the building? How did it take root, your particular interest in 41 South Main Street building? And was it tied in any way to being an educator and your interest in education? Wow, loaded question. <laughs> Very loaded. <laughs> My first full restoration project was this one, 41. Though my old home that isn't too far away from this present home on South Whittlesea was also a very older home. And my husband and I did a lot of projects to restore that home as well. Um, so I guess that's probably where we first dabbled in restoration and our love of older homes. Certainly we just love the architect and the older homes and so forth. I think my interest in 41 South Main was seeing it there, you know, seeing this house on the parade grounds. Um, I remember it as the American Legion building. I can remember comings and goings. I was never inside it when it was the American Legion building. And then, you know, of course we read about everything in the paper for you know, decades. The, it was nearly a decade. It was the forever. Paper. You know, <laughs> yes. the, the town was buying it. The town was going to demolish all those kind of things that mm -hmm. happened. The building just always struck me as this grand building and in, in, in the absolute perfect location. When my family was very young and my children were young, we attended all those grand festivities on the parade ground. Um, you know, they had Halloween and Christmas and the town council, uh, concerts I used to attend with my parents. I sat in front of that house many times, often wondered what it looked like. Mm -hmm. And then I remember when the council actually was opening it up, one of the concerts actually, and my, my dad said, it's, it's opened, you know, go in. Like, you know, so he you know, sort of encouraged me along. to yes. go in, and I did. It was disastrous. I mean, you know, the inside of that house was absolutely disastrous. I do know that because <laughs> WPA was interested right. in that building right. as well. We initially weren't interested. We were nudged yep. to get involved by members of the town council. Mm -hmm. And I spent personally six to nine months researching the property it was not ideal for a public building. It's three stories, as mm -hmm. you know. It had stairs. It was bereft of its porch. And when we went inside, it was like, oh, my God. But we had this incredible architect, and he spent hours and hours. He loved the building. He just madly fell in love with the building, and he spent hours drawing what it could be brought back to life as. Right. So I absolutely know the power of that building when you first walk in and go oh my god but then oh look at that look yeah. at that it, yeah. there was so much magic inside right it really was as you know the town gutting the building mm -hmm. and pretty much had gutted it a lot there was not much really to be seen mm -hmm. when you were in the building but the architect itself those windows mm -hmm. I mean the windows were just glorious those stained glass windows and and so just walking around, I remember I didn't go downstairs. I, I didn't want, I was afraid to go downstairs. <laughs> it was a little creepy. Um, so I didn't go downstairs. But because someone had seen me in the building, and it was a councilman, you know, saying, are you interested in the building? I said, I would love to live up here. At that point, my children had grown. We had this very large house in Whittlesey looking to downsize. Mm -hmm. Everyone kept saying, Erin, that's not downsizing. <laughs> that's bigger than the one you have. But I had, you know, our friends that worked a lot on our house on Whittlesey, contractors, mm -hmm. asked them to come in with me the second time. Is it doable to just live on the first floor? Mm -hmm. And then eventually 
you know, do I have enough space just to live on the first floor? Eventually, you know, maybe rent the second floor. Mm -hmm. I had no intention of doing anything to the third. As you know, there were just as large third floor as there is a second floor. Yeah. So he did, and, you know, I sort of dabbled around, and, and then they started taking bids for it, but I didn't bid. Mm -hmm. When it first went out to bid, I did not. Yeah, you know. we were the only bid. Yeah. And then, you know, then you read, you know, oh, that bid, you know, that one was removed. And then there were others that went in and all the different reasons for it. Probably a couple of years later, I again went into the house. It was a little bit more cleaned up as, than it was the first time I entered it. And encouraged again to bid. Then I knew, though, the problems with the sewer. I knew the cost of, you know, fixing the sewer. You couldn't, couldn't encroach on the parade grounds to do any of the work. And mm -hmm. I just said, no, that's just... It's just too costly, and you yeah. know, and I was, but I was told, no, they changed those rules, you know, and I said, but it's not, you know, in the bid, it really is saying not for residential use. We took that out too, you know, so they really <laughs> encouraged, <laughs> so I did. So how about the historical research? You, you're talking about going into the building, mm -hmm. actually physically seeing it firsthand, but when did you start saying, okay, but what is the story behind this piece of property? That's when I, I started. I into you, actually, at the... Wallingford Historical Society, trying to find out a little bit more about the Oh, yes. I did. And, you know, it's not a house to find out a lot of information about. Mm -hmm. We were able to obtain one picture of that house, and thank God we had it. The town hall had it. It was the only way that our front porch was able to be put on, because that picture existed. Because there was no picture showing that house ever had a front porch. And, of course, that was part of the... That was one of the exclusions that they yes. were really hard on us about. Because yes. we had ex expected to have a gazebo-type porch put back on. Right, right. Yeah. And, it, you know, and I'm glad those kind of things are in place like that, mm -hmm. you know, to preserve these older homes. Because um, I think it is important. But it is a, it was a house not... Like, I couldn't find a lot of information. I did go to the library. Um, this was before the library has... Um, is it Ancestry? I think it's Ancestry that they use now, mm -hmm. which is a little easier to research. I was able to get a little more information um, later on. But when I first was starting to look at, you know, what is this house? Like, I realized there was only one owner before this. Mm -hmm. My husband and I thought that was pretty neat. We're the second owners of this massive house that sits right in the center of town. And only as one a other. family. Right. Yeah, as a family. Yes. Only so who one was other. that first owner? Roger Austin. Roger Austin. Another man hard to find information about. Exactly. What did you find? Um, he's referred to as a constable um, on, on, on certain things that I've seen um, as a sheriff, mm -hmm. tax collector. Um, I guess he had a lot of different types of jobs. And, and sold ice. Sold ice. That was the controversial part of his yeah. life, I guess. Mm -hmm. He owned an ice house that was um, burnt down. By arson, and I, guess, I think that got into the New York Times. Yes, because it was a very prominent family that were supposedly bickering over the, the arsonist. <laughs> <laughs> so that was interesting, but then it, you know, it just talks about when it happened, but it doesn't say anything else about what happened. I volunteer at the Johnson home. One of the girls that volunteers there, she does a lot of work for the cemetery, mm -hmm. and she said, um, you know, his wife is buried in the Center Street ce yeah. Cemetery. Okay. And she says that we found, we know where hers is. She said that we have nothing on Roger Austin and perhaps he is not buried there. Mm -hmm. And she died earlier, like she died when they still lived in the home. I got the impression when the home was sold, he was still alive, mm -hmm. I, that's the impression I got. We think his daughter was the one that sold it to the American Legion. Mm -hmm. um, it's hard, though. She, her last name was Barnes at the time. She was married. It's hard to trace it to if she is the daughter of Roger Austin, mm -hmm. um, but we assumed it is because there was... She was the one that sold it. Sold it. It had yeah. to be a family member, we're yeah. assuming, you know, that had to be in there. So so that's really how it it all came about. And But he was interesting in what he was interested in. He liked to tinker uh, with new technology, and he was very interested in um, European styles, which... We'll, we'll talk about later about the fireplaces, I mm -hmm. believe. The little bit that I could find about him made me think that, oh, he would be just such a wonderful person to have a conversation with yeah, very uh, much because so. <laughs> he was so interested in very niche kinds of things. Yes. I found a house almost exactly like it. Really? In Arizona. Bisbee, oh Arizona, which is like as close to the Mexican border as you can get. It's a copper mining town. The only way you can get there is by railroad. Oh, okay. And the reason that was so much alike is that they used the same turn-of-the-century technology 
and the prefabrication pieces that are on the windows. Oh, okay. All of that was transportable to communities by rail, but they were so heavy and, and precious that they didn't travel far once in town. So almost all of these homes, they all kind of look alike, but they're not more than a mile or so away from the train the depot. Train, yes. And so it was just, I was walking through Bisbee and um, looking for turquoise on the road and I looked up and I said, oh my God, we're in this big controversy back home. I thought I was leaving the controversy <laughs> behind me. And I said, that house looks exactly like 41 South Main Street. And looked at my husband and said, should we go in? Should we knock on the door and see if anybody's there? I'm like curious if they have fireplaces like Roger yeah, Austin. Yeah. And, um, they didn't have the same fireplaces, but it was it's almost a carbon copy. Wow. So How that exciting. was really exciting to have happen at that point in time. Yeah. I was trying to escape 41 South Main Street on vacation, <laughs> but it, it followed me. Yes, we were in the news for quite some time. <laughs> yes. What are the tools that you try to use to research the house and the person? A lot of people who were in the home, um, mm -hmm. you know, trying to get some information from the American Legion. Again, not, not too successful. We knew a lot of people that would say, oh, yeah, I had my shower there. I, you know, I attended a stag there. I used to play car cards was a big thing. I guess mm -hmm. they had certain nights for cards, so cards, and which makes sense because some of the furniture that was left were the old card tables. Mm -hmm. You could tell that they were. There was a pizza oven on the third there, floor. There was a pizza <laughs> oven, which we, we had to make sure we got out before we started repairing walls because mm -hmm. no, I don't even know how they got it in, quite mm -hmm. frankly, but mm -hmm. um, we had to make sure that came out of the house before we started our work because it was a very large pizza oven <laughs> in there. We found a lot about the building after we moved in because we sort of did like a little open house um, for people to come and meet our contractors. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it was sort of our thank you to the town council um, is what we opened it up to them and others. Some of the people that came, it was amazing, the stories and some of the letters that I received after they left the home to tell me the stories about when they were there, you yeah. know, as young children. Um, and these were older, you know, older folks, but, you know, we met the bartender's kids that would go there every Saturday to have soda. I believe the American <laughs> Legion might have owned it for like 75 years or it's something a long time. like that. Yeah. That I was surprised when I found out. I yeah. think they owned it longer than the Austins did. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, and it's, it's even hard to tell, like, it's listed as 1890, but that even the town records aren't sure if that's the beginning of the construction or the end of the construction. Mm -hmm. My guess is it's the end, end of the construction. The end of the construction. Um, but there's very little um, about it because when that house was sitting there, of course, the town hall, Robert Early, was not sitting there. So mm -hmm. um, it is, you know, it is neat to see those pictures. Was the Judd Mansion its neighbor? Yes, yes, so it was, was there. A really magnificent house, and right. I saw something that gave me the impression that Roger wanted to have a magnificent house, but he couldn't have the magnificent, magnificent house. house. Yes, and he was doing his best to have one. And the porch was really important because it went out on the parade ground. It was open to the public and making right. it a community house, even and a welcoming place. Right. Um, he didn't think the mansion was welcoming, but. He wanted his, his home little to be. mansion to right. be welcoming. To look welcoming. And I can imagine, you know, making up stories about this man just from the little things about the fireplace and the porch that you, we could actually, you know, create a magical Roger Austin because we don't know the real one. Right, um, right. Yeah. I tried really hard to get it listed as the Roger S. Austin House mm -hmm. on Notable Homes in the Record Journal. and. That had been called the American Legion building and American Legion building this and that and nobody was really buying into uh, tying it to the original owner and the person who designed how it would be on the parade ground. And I don't know why there was pushback, but there was just so much, uh, I think possibly all the endearing stories that you heard about the American Legion, that it really was cemented in people's memories as a gathering place for the community. That would be my guess, too. We would have people say, please refer to as the Roger Austin House, which we do. Mm -hmm. um, but if anyone, you know, they'll often say, oh, you bought the American Legion home, you know. And, um, but we, we actually have some of those, you know, the bricks from the center of town. And it is the Roger Austin House. It mm -hmm. doesn't say the American Legion for when it was built. And we really didn't know much about him until after we bought the house. Mm -hmm. um, 
like you said, most of the stories are about the American Legion. Did you actually research anything about the parade ground itself and its history with Wallingford, since it's set sitting there and its lo location is, is so important to this community? I, I did a little bit about that. If you look at the National Registry, it just says South Main Street, and it just lists numbers. 41 is on there, mm -hmm. but it's sort of hard to understand how far it goes down South Main Street. It seems to go further up, like where the old library used to sit, which is also there. And so a lot of reference was made to that as why the homes on this strip of land were also considered historical homes because it sat on the parade grounds. I heard town councilors reference um, they were interested in the outside of the building, and I became fascinated with the inside right? Uh, because they didn't want it to look like a toothless landscape mm -hmm. on, on the parade ground. Right. They wanted it full of richness and history, and, and they were looking at really the almost like a facade, the, the way a street would present itself right. without a gap. The TV station decided to pursue it when we were asked to pursue it mm -hmm. because we thought that it had a symbolic meaning, mm -hmm. being the center of where people would gather, military would do actually parade yes. on the grounds yep. in preparation for wartime, the revolution. And we didn't come to find out until much later that it was called the gathering. When the revolution started, it was the, one of the first places in America that there was a gathering of free men, free men which happens to be what we had named our penguin, Freeman Penny Quinn. <laughs> we hail back to that idea of the parade ground and the spirit in the center yeah. of the community through our penguin, Freeman <laughs> P. Quinn, the first free speech ambassador. Uh, but it, it was startling to find out. I learned that of that at a Wallingford um, Historical Society meeting. Ah. And um, Mr. Balmont was talking about that gathering on the parade ground. Town crier called through the streets announcing a special town meeting. Approximately 4,000 people living in Wallingford at the time. The men left their work, ran to learn the meaning and the, of the excitement. They remained for a special meeting and took the oath of free man, thus proclaiming them forerunners of American democracy. He is definitely a wealth of information. He certainly is, yes. yes. We did reach out to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> was he excited that you saved the, the property? Yes, he yes. was. Yes, most people are. Okay. Yeah, most people were very excited, you know, that we were doing it, mm -hmm. you know. They were excited just watching it, you know, watching the construction was, mm -hmm. you know, the whole town was watching it. Yeah. My contractors eventually had to say, we have to stop people from, from coming in, coming in yeah. you know. To be safe and yes. yeah. like, liability. You know, yes. I think it was when your aunt came and wanted to see the inside of your house, and I had to tell them I don't have an aunt, that we <laughs> we sort of stopped, stopped anybody entering the house. So people were almost creating yes. you know, name badges for themselves. And, and I get it. They, giving, they made, made you right. extended family just they so that they could see. They were in there. See. You walk by. It's right next to the town hall. Yeah. One would think that it was a town building. A town building. Yeah. Yeah. It almost was. Yep, it almost was. <laughs> I'm looking forward to talking to you more about the architecture mm -hmm. because I think that is one of the fascinating aspects of 41 South Main Street. But uh, let's just say to our viewers, you want to know more about that particular house, we're going to talk more about it in the next segment. Uh, the Roger Austin House, right here in this little book, which you'll also find out more about. So thank you, Aaron, for com coming and having this conversation and considering more conversation about something that is called Queen Anne style? Yep. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us.